Hello everyone, back to you in today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather next week, 10 days. In today's video, uh, it's going to take us to around the 14th of uh, May, so going up to the middle part of the month with this update. Uh, we'll start off though by having a look at the climate averages from the UK Met Office for April. It's been a very extreme month in terms of precipitation. So we'll start with temperatures. This is the temperature anomaly for April, uh, setting at 61 to 99, which is the old and cold temperature average encompasses the cold decade of the 1960s. So set against 61 to 1990, we can see we have had a warmer than average month, quite obviously all places coming out above average, but not a huge deviation. Eastern parts have generally had the greatest deviation around one degree above average. Elsewhere, around half a degree above average, really, for most parts of the country, set against 61 to 1990. If we set against 81 to 2010, well, look at this, we actually come out closer to average. So uh, some Western parts of the country are around average, um, but east there is still a little bit above average, but uh, the more modern average, which is warmer, of course, 81 to 2010, hasn't really been a particularly warmer than average uh, April. Much more dramatic with the precipitation, though. So these are the UK rainfall uh, anomalies for uh, April. And you see that, uh, interestingly, the very far northwest Scotland has come out with quite a significantly wetter than average month. Uh, so obviously that's where the jet stream has been through much of April, just to the northwest of Scotland. But through most parts of the country, it's actually been a very significantly drier than average month, set against 61 to 1990. All places have come out dry than average, really. The um, driest weather looks like it's been for southeastern parts of Scotland and also for central southern parts of England, where some places are as low as 20% of the rainfall average. And that's the same, really, if we look at 81, 2010. In fact, it's possibly a little bit drier, uh, setting out 81 to uh, 2010. So, again, the very far northwest of Scotland comes out a bit wetter than average. Elsewhere, the rest of the country comes out drier than average. Southeast of Scotland, parts of southern England, central southern England, coming out with uh, anomalies of 20% of average, a very significantly drier than average month indeed. And, of course, if that was on its own, it wouldn't really be all that concerning. But we have had several months preceding this of dry weather. So um, we must have a fairly big rainfall deficit now uh, for the past six months or so. And uh, we're going to wait and see where things are going into the summer. And, of course, if this dry weather continues into the summer, things are likely to become a little bit more uh, critical. Just want to start, uh, start off with this in terms of the video, uh, in terms of the Outlook video. Um, so we can see that, uh, well, the wind today has come from a long way east. This is the GFS uh, synoptic chart for today. And, uh, well, look how far east the winds are coming. The air is originating from Russia. That's a proper long fetch uh, easterly. Yes, we're sending those east winds well into the central part of the Atlantic, actually, all courtesy of this big blocking feature that's uh, stretched out between Iceland and Greenland. And that's the kind of thing you're looking for in the winter, folks. If you get that uh, sort of long fetch easterly with the air originating from Russia um, and not really a southerly component, either you follow the isobars back, there's no real southerly component to modify this air. So that's the kind of thing you're looking for in winter. If you get that, uh, you really do know about it. You'd have sub-zero daytime temperatures and probably snow driving in. Uh, from the east. It's been a long time since we've had a long fetch easterly in the middle of winter uh, like that. So, as far as the outlook is concerned, these are the GFS and uh, ECMWF height anomalies from the PSU uh, website. We've got the ECMWF here on the top, and the GFS, have a look at it in a moment, is on the bottom, 500 middle hours, 8,000 feet, is an area in the atmosphere. High pressure, low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream running above. But let's extrapolate to low pressure, rate to high pressure. These are the mean flow charts uh, for the next week, 10 days, so it takes us to the middle of May. You can see that things are um, forecast to turn more unsettled here. We're taking the area of above average heights so of high pressure out more towards the west of Canada and pushing it up towards uh, towards the Arctic, but on the Canadian side. And that's allowing these areas of low pressure in the Atlantic to advance in. So this does imply that as we go through to the middle part of May, we could well turn things quite a lot more unsettled. I talked about this yesterday, of course, the chance of 
uh, significantly more unsettled weather coming along uh, through this middle part of May through the second week of the month. The GFS and ECNUF high tsunamis appear to be shown. Now, that's ECNUF. This is the GFS, which, if, if anything, is even more unsettled. Look at this. We're actually placing the trough right over the top of the country and stretching it down there. So that does look like a proper unsettled spell there as we're going into the middle part of uh, May with the GFS model. You'd expect bouts of rain to be coming in with that. And obviously, it's much needed rain, so it's not bad news. It's good news if you're a farmer or a gardener in particular. Uh, but will it come off? That's the question. We have to be a little bit due because it's been so dry for so long. A very unsettled spell of weather would sort of break the trend of what we've been in for some time and would be a little bit surprising. So we've got to wait and see whether that actually verifies. These are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles next two weeks. The red line here is the third year temperature average and not really deviating all that far from average actually over the uh, next uh, week, even next couple of weeks, gen temperatures generally holding up uh, around the seasonal uh, norm. Got some rainfall sp uh, spikes there for uh, the weekend. This is for London, this ensemble chart, so we could well bring some rain into the south on Saturday in particular. Then it turns dry second half of next week, and then up to the middle part of the month, much more unsettled. It's in the extended range of the model, so we have to be careful with that. Seemingly, there's quite good agreement to turn things unsettling to the second week and then the middle part of May. But I think we do need to just stay cautious on it for a few more days. Temperature anomalies for next week are still coming out cooler than average. So even though the uh, prayer temperatures are suggesting temperatures to be around average, the actual anomaly in terms of surface temperatures is coming out a little bit colder than average, as it is for most parts of Europe. And look how chilly it is over in uh, Russia as well. Again, this is probably being caused by uh, cool nights under this ridge of high pressure. Uh, the precipitation anomaly looks like that. Still driving average for the next week. Any unsettled weather that does occur as we run up towards the middle of the month will be, on, will be beyond this period of the 4th to the 12th of May. So, just uh, have a look at the generic charts. This is the uh, GFS for Monday. But we're under high pressure. That blocking features around Iceland. It's sending this ridge down across the country. That high pressure stays in control through the first half of next week. Wednesday is starting to take at high pressure to Greenland. And low pressure is beginning to do the undercut uh, to the south of it, trying to push rain bands up from uh, the south as this ridge gets pushed up. Retrogressive is actually to uh, Greenland. And as we go into the extended parts, so this is a week away, Thursday the 11th, things are turning genuinely unsettled. Then low pressure is moving in from the south southwest. And that low pressure then stays with us into the weekend of the 13th, 14th of May. Day 10 is uh, Sunday the 14th of May, when we are firmly in an unsettled pattern. Low pressures dominated the west of Scotland. We're bringing in these westerly winds, so it'll be showery. There'll be outbreaks of rain. And everything's driving in from off the Atlantic at that point. Notice the blocking, however, is reducing uh, quite a lot. That's heading up. You can't really see it now. It's heading up towards the Canadian part of the, uh, of the Arctic. Beyond day 10, things stay unsettled with this particular run of the uh, GF. The uh, east end of the air finally looks like this, so uh, for Monday we're under a ridge of high pressure, still bringing in an easterly wind which is likely to bring cooler air to the east, but generally high pressure is dominating through the first half of next week, then that high pressure gets taken up to green, it retrogresses away, low pressure developing out to our west and to our south too, and it all turns very unsettling to the second half of next week and into the weekend of the 13th, 14th of May, with low pressure out to west throwing up rain bands across the country. Notice high pressure is back in again across Scandinavia though, uh, so maybe if we could run on a day or two beyond this, what we will find is this low pressure uh, getting pushed down to the south, and the winds probably going back into the east once again. Uh, we won't worry about uh, the conditions beyond day 10. It's still the idea for the next uh, week to 10 days that we was talking about yesterday and in the videos recently. Lots of dry weather for the first half of next week. Then the second half of next week, and running up to the middle of May, is forecast to turn unsettled. Now, because this is a week away, we do have to stay cautious about it. It's over a week away. We do have to stay cautious about this because it's quite a change on what's gone on before. However, in any dry spell, you can get uh, short interludes of unsettled conditions. That might be what's going to happen. The ECWF would imply that actually have a short unsettled interlude 
and then that quite quickly within about five days going back to that high pressure over Scandinavia uh, once again Oops, not sure what happened there uh, right so uh, that's all for now and tomorrow we'll be doing um, JMA Friday so uh, come back uh, for that that will extend out across the uh, whole of the month of course but uh, that's all for now thanks for watching